education and then now we have moved uh, towards the uh, factors that will be helping us to create this enabling environment for the CVIS. So towards that today, uh, we will be learning more about the financing mechanisms. So one of the key concerns that most of us face and also during our previous uh, session, most of you were struggling is on terms of financing, how to get the funds. Uh, not just in terms of the resource planning or the implementation, but also financing is very important when we come to the mo uh, monitoring or the maintenance part of it, because it is linked to the sustainability of the infrastructure. So in today's session, we will be discussing one of the innovative ways in which we can finance these projects, that is by public-private partnership. So a PPP can be done across the sanitation value chain. Uh, whether it may be public toilets or the treatment units or the desludging. So we will be learning in detail how uh, private can help the, uh, through these PPP projects, how we can succeed in maintaining, uh, implementing these facilities and also in maintaining this. So, and also we will be learn how the private uh, PPP projects can help us not just in bringing the financing, but also the technical expertise, which is required for these projects and also the risk sharing between the public and uh, uh, private sector. So we'll be uh, going in detail and uh, discussing each of these components. So we have a set of uh, very experienced speakers who will be discussing about the different case studies where this PPP projects have been successful. You can ask your questions with them. So uh, without any delay, I will uh, get started with this uh, session with our first speaker, Mr. Manasrat. He is from Boda. Hello, sir. Uh, welcome to the session. So, hello. Uh, hi, Mr. Jyotra. Yeah, hi. So, Mr. Manasrat would be taking us through an example of Lay uh, FSSM, how they have turned the whole project into public-private partnership from the desludging to the treatment. So, he'll be taking us through the whole journey of the Lay FSM business model. So, over to you, sir. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, let me share my screen. Is my screen visible? It's loading. Just uh, middle take. Yeah, it is up. You can start. Okay. And can you see it change? Yes. Okay. Perfect. Great. Uh, good afternoon or good evening, um, everyone. Uh, it's very nice to be here with you. I'll be uh, talking about uh, using uh, a public-private partnership I was involved in in setting up uh, fecal sludge management services for lay which is a small town in northern India, in Ladakh, the northernmost up in the Himalayas. And the idea was to create citywide fecal sludge management services uh, through a public-private partnership. Uh, Leh, just as background, it's a high-altitude cold desert. It's almost uh, 12,000 feet up in the Himalayas. Uh, you get winter temperatures going down to minus 30 degrees Celsius at night and uh, daytime summer temperatures at about 32 degrees. For a big part of the year, for almost eight, nine, eight months of the year, nighttime temperatures do approach zero. Um, okay, so you have a short summer and uh, a lot of cold times of the year. Uh, it's become a big tourist town in recent years. It's, uh, it, you know, its population is about 45,000 now, but a lot of workers come there in the summer uh, to work on construction uh, uh, and tourism uh, businesses. And uh, tourism has been growing. Uh, you can see that from 2017, it's grown, uh, you know, almost 60% to last year. Because of this, there's been a huge boom in hotels, guest houses, a uh, lot of development and construction. And therefore, with their modern toilets, they used to use dry toilets, which were very well suited for the cold uh, environment and septic tanks with it. Uh, now, we also know that from a climate change perspective, high altitudes, uh, you know, face greater climate change impacts than uh, sea level. Right? So they've been seeing increasing number of floods and unseasonal rain, um, etc. And there's a water stress or potential water stress as the glaciers also retreat and the water consumption, of course, rises. Uh, in 2017, the municipality came to uh, Borda, uh, which is a German NGO that has been working in India and Ladakh on water and wastewater issues for many, many years. Borda had, uh, along with its partner, CDD, 
had built India's first fecal slush treatment plant near Bangalore uh, in 2015-2016 in a town called Devanhalli. Uh, the town had found evidence of groundwater pollution uh, with E. coli samples. I think they'd done about 20 samples. And they found E. coli in 11 or 12 of those. And groundwater is heavily used for drinking and for all kinds of applications. So obviously, there was panic. Uh, many Indian towns, tourist towns, including Shimla, have had regular uh, you know, epidemics with cholera and other waterborne diseases because of groundwater pollution often created by excessive tourism. So they obviously didn't want to have the same, uh, you know, same uh, problem. So they came and said, what can we do about this? The sewerage system was already under construction at the time, but they had no idea when it would be finished, what percentage of the town it would eventually cover and how effective it would be, right? So it could be two years or the best estimate the worst estimate was in five years, it may cover only 30-40% of the actual structure because you've got, you know, in, in hilly towns, you've got sloping areas, the pipes cannot reach easily. Uh, the reality, as it turned out, is the sewer network really became operational around 2021-2022, so four or five years from then, and it even today covers maybe 30% or 40% of the city, right? Uh, so it was good that they thought of some alternative that they wanted uh, without relying on the sewer network alone. And they didn't have a budget for this. So they said to get a budget pass would take two years. They have a short four month to five month long window for construction. So they needed a solution that could be fast and where the city did not have to, the government didn't have to spend money because the budgeting process would take forever. And something that would be climate resilient that would work in the heat and the, the cold. Uh, Borda had been active in Ladakh uh, doing different kinds of projects for almost 30 years. There are strong reputation there. And therefore, there's a high degree of trust which enabled the, the third P of PPP, right, the partnership. Usually, the partnership doesn't really happen very well, right? That's typically what we see in PPPs. Uh, but because here, Borda had local knowledge and the sort of a long-standing trust, um, you know, it, it was much easier to create a solution uh, which would be suitable and acceptable to all parties. What we structured was something like a Swiss challenge kind of process. And I'll just explain quickly what that is. A Swiss challenge is one where a particular party uh, goes to the buyer, let's say to the government, and says, hey, here is an idea, right? Uh, and they sort of come up with a solution. They say, here's an idea we have. Now, of course, the government cannot just say, oh, good idea, go do it, because you have procurement norms. So the government then opens up that idea for public competition, right? And says, okay, whoever wants to implement this idea can come forward, uh, and they invite proposals. Then once the proposals come in, they go back to the original party and say, look, this is the best price we have gotten, right? If you can match that price, we will do it with you. Otherwise, we'll award the contract to whoever gave that low cost or the best price uh, or the best proposal, okay? So the party has an incentive to come up with an idea because they get a chance to then compete and say, okay, we can do it at that price. Or if they say, no, we can't do it at that price, you give it to somebody else. The government gets free ideas. They also get a good commercial deal. And a proposing party has the advantage in that they're creating the framework for the idea in the first place. And later, they can always come back and bid more competitively if others uh, sort of, uh, you know, also uh, also given strong proposals, right? So we ran that sort of process, but very, very quickly, because we knew that nobody does work in Ladakh and nobody has experience of working in those altitudes and those climatic conditions. Now, this is the fecal slash treatment plant. Just to move along, this is the treatment plant that we built. It can handle 12 to 15 uh, KLD, uh, depending on weather conditions. It costs about $130,000, so about $10,000 per KLD, but only about $3 per capita, given the town's uh, population. Uh, very low operating cost. You can see less than $1,000 a month in OPEX. And it took less than three months from design to commissioning. It took under three months, right? And that's the unheard of in terms of time frame. And that is... Uh, you know, and I'll talk about why uh, that was possible. This is a photo a little while later. I say this is probably the most beautiful fecal slush treatment plant in the world in terms of the environment. And this photo does no justice to the beauty of the location. Uh, this was the truck that we refurbished, the government's uh, truck, and we used a bit of Buddhist humor. Uh, happiness doesn't come from what we get, but from what we give. So give us your shit and be happy. Um, and people appreciated this. It would roam around during the summer on the streets and tourists would take photos of this, right? So we thought it was a bit cheeky. We thought the local officials might get a bit offended, but everyone everyone loved it. So we took a bit of uh, risk over there. Uh, this is just a schematic. Uh, it has planted drying beds, uh, 10 of them. And every day the truck can go and discharge in different beds. 
the water gets filtered through the planted drying bed into the horizontal planted gravel filters. From there, it gets stored in a polishing pond and then it is used for some greenification on the site and off the site as well. Uh, and we kept enough space for expanding it in case capacity had to be expanded or we wanted to add other sort of waste management uh, services in there, like, for example, uh, you know, some solid waste management or building a green space, et cetera. Now, what are the lessons from this case study? Um, it was the first time that we had suggested a planted drying bed. Uh, so we had to do some study at Borda. We had to do some study before recommending it. But we just felt it to be very robust in the cold climate. Seven years later, we have not had to clean out the drying beds even once. It's, it's performed beyond expectations uh, in, in every sense possible. We meet all the pollution control board parameters and it's absolutely been the easiest thing to maintain literally as close to zero work as, as possible. So this bet on a new technology that had not been tested in India worked out because Borda had experience doing this in other countries. So we were able to sort of bring the knowledge here. It was a very simple for a PPP, relatively short term. It was a five year with a two year extension provision. The reason we did five years is the local government said, if we do a, sorry, if we do a longer contract, then we'll have to go through more procurement processes and so on. So let's give it as short as possible. So we did five plus two years. It was the first PPP for FSM in India. Uh, the Municipal Committee of Leh and the Ladakh Development Authority, they once they understood the requirement, they showed us four plots of land. They said, choose which one you want. And we chose one and they said, this is yours. You can start digging from tomorrow if you want. Again, the sense of partnership and the sense of urgency, because they only had a four-month, five-month summer window in which to uh, build this, uh, they moved, you know, they did everything that a government could possibly do to enable the partnership and enable the solution. And, uh, you know, that really helped with to do it, uh, you know, very quickly, right? Now, the idea was we told them, make it an integrated model, single party. You don't want one party doing a treatment plan, one party providing the desludging services. You'll always have fights between the two parties and then you'll be, as a government, will have to sort of decide who is right, who is wrong. So we said, just have one party. So you have single party accountability. So Blue Water Company, the company that uh, that sort of was uh, invited, that did the Swiss challenge kind of process, would invest in the FSTP and provide scheduled uh, fecal sludge management services in the town. Uh, Borda and the municipal committee, uh, you know, they engaged the, the, they engaged the end customers, mainly the hotels and guest houses, and got them to agree to annual cleaning, uh, scheduled cleaning, and they would pay a fee for this. For them, it was a small part of the overall cost of doing business. So they agreed quite easily. And we felt if we had the guest houses and hotels covered, that was a bulk of the wastewater in the town. Then the houses and the offices and all could be easily adjusted into the schedule. But we had tackled the bulk of the problem through scheduled cleaning services. right? So we don't have to solve 100% of the problem, but we solve maybe 80% of the problem. Uh, whatever revenue was collected, 90% uh, would be paid to Blue Water Company. 10% would be kept for, by the Municipal Committee of Lay, MCL. There are literally zero work to do, no OPEX, no CAPEX. And so free revenue for them. And they committed they will spend this money to do sanitation promotion activities in the future. Uh, we had, uh, like I said, actually, you know, under four months, three months from, four months from the first discussion, three months from the time they gave us a go-ahead, uh, actually less, uh, 78 days from the time they gave the go-ahead, showed us a plot of land and said, all right, Let's move. And then till inauguration was 78 days. But uh, it took about five, six weeks to do the whole sort of process and the study and the design and so on, which is also very, very fast, but it was doable. Uh, Municipal Committee of Leh, they owned that truck earlier. They had an open site in the uh, solid waste dumping yard, a landfill, where they used to go and discharge the fecal starch onto open spaces. They used to do about five, uh, you know, they should do about five or six cleanings every month, uh, three or four cleanings every month of what they would do. It was clearly a loss-making service for them. Um, we were up, so sorry, they used to do about 20 cleanings a month, I'm sorry. And uh, once Blue Water Company came in, they were doing 80 to 100 and sometimes going up to 115 septic tanks clean every month. So you had a five-time increase in the level of service provided in the town, right? And it went from being a loss-making service for the municipality to a profit generator now. Uh, Blue Water Company was consistently profitable, but even after seven years, it has it still has not completely earned back its capital. Uh, maybe a, a lesson as a private party, it came in quickly. Uh, it, there wasn't a long study or a sort of negotiation. So maybe those are some lessons learned, uh, but it will almost earn back the full investment and they've been able to generate some other businesses 
uh, in Leh because their presence, due to which as a business, it actually earned a profit being in Leh, uh, not a large one, but a small profit. But this particular contract was maybe just about break even or a little less. So. Okay. This shows the flow chart. As you can see, the blue boxes are what Blue Water Company does. The yellow boxes are what the municipality does. So it really has very little work to do. It collects an annual fee from all the hotels and restaurants uh, and guest houses at the start of the year as part of their business license fee. So they have to pay an annual fee anyway. The FSM charge which is added to it. And then they issue the schedule for cleaning to uh, the customers. And if the customers don't provide, don't make their uh, septic tank available, then they issue a notice and collect a fine. Okay? So that's all the municipality has to do. Everything else is done by the private party. Some of the challenges, uh, the municipal uh, uh, infrastructure, the truck was really bad quality. It would break down very often. So Blue Water Company had to buy a new truck uh, suited for the high altitude performance and this increased the cost of the project for us. Uh, so therefore, you know, some flexibility should be there for compensation. Maybe the price could be increased or the government should create a one-time fund to you know, pay for any such uh, overruns. Uh, the crisis, the environmental, so it wasn't a crisis here, but the fear of a crisis and the personal interest of the municipality was absolutely critical, right? Uh, we had no delay payments, which is unheard of in India. There was high interest in FSM. But then when the municipal administrator changed and a new person came in, this was not their project. So then we had delays in payment. There was not so much, you know, focus on it. And uh, then we had the problem that Indian government often has in, in these sort of contracts. Um, so, you know, so how do you overcome the personal aspect of the administrator and make it more institutional is something that we're still grappling with. Um, we realize that cold climate affects the operating costs, increases the operating costs, reduces the time when we can operate. As I said, there are almost uh, 250 days, uh, which where the nighttime temperature approaches zero and desludging become very difficult, right? So those led to higher costs, but also made us innovate. And I won't talk about it here, but we had some awards that we won for innovations which are now also being used by other towns. And uh, to simplify the cash flow issue, we just integrated this fee into the hotel's annual license fee. So then collecting fees, getting payment becomes much easier. So the government literally collects all the money in April. And then through the year, as in when we provide the services, as in when Blue Water Services, Blue Water Company provides services, they give a statement at the end of the month, it will verify the municipality and that much payment gets released. So it's a you know, cash wise, it's a very easy system. Of course, it works well because of the large commercial presence in that town. In other towns, it may not work as well. Okay. Um, so just some observations. Uh, customer interest remains high. The service has been working very well. The army then came in later saying, can you also clean our cantonments, which are nearby? So there's additional revenue to be generated. Uh, as I said, the municipal interest is very important for a true partnership in the PPP. Otherwise, it becomes like any other contract. Uh, we kept the contract very simple. It was a 30-page agreement, not typical 100-page uh, agreements uh, because it was a small contract and a small project. Uh, it, there was a lot of negotiation that happened versus a traditional, you know, send your proposal in, in a closed envelope and we'll choose the winner. So the negotiation and conversation allowed for a better solution uh, to be evolved uh, by the parties. And that's so the Swiss challenge method allows that sort of conversation to happen versus a traditional PPP. Um, and then uh, BORDA continued to provide third-party monitoring and in some cases also third-party dispute resolution, which helped sort of the relationship between the government and the Blue Water Company, right? So that third-party presence can be very useful. Uh, integrated solution we have found works very, very well. Um, the fee collection done by the uh, this thing was uh, useful by the ULB. Uh, we didn't build based on 30-year projections. We said, what do we need now for the next three to five years? And then later, actually, we adapted the technology and added capacity uh, to, you know, so that uh, uh, so that uh, the system was, you know, more effective than if you had sort of set a projection of in 20 years, the, the, the fecal search would be so much that you get an oversized infrastructure, which becomes very expensive and reduces your flexibility in the future. Uh, you know, so one problem uh, may not be for other countries, uh, but municipal projects, even nationalized banks will not lend money for that. And therefore, that whole sort of Cash flow predictability is a huge issue uh, in India, and they're seeing how to solve, address those issues. Uh, I don't know if other countries face that problem as well. We have not, not really been able to integrate this project because the sewage contract was given to somebody else. The solid waste is run by two separate parties. 
So, you know, that integrated approach to waste management, unfortunately, did not happen in lay because all these contacts were with different parties. But there were some lessons from that. And, uh, you know, maybe that would lead to better outcomes uh, in the future. Um, there was at that point no city roadmap for sanitation. Uh, I think a master plan of sorts would be useful so that there would not be piecemeal contracts. There's still no, the government still doesn't have any kind of oversight body or system, like a utility, for example. Uh, and therefore, BORDA provides that su su support, but it again may or may not be replicable in other cities <coughs> where the trust levels, for example, may not be as high. So a need for that utility or some sort of oversight body uh, is still important and a roadmap is important. Uh, given that we have tight time, that's sort of what I have today. Uh, happy to take any questions later on uh, about this, but I hope this was interesting and you'll get the uh, presentation. We're happy to answer any questions even later uh, if you wish. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. It's a really interesting uh, uh, journey of lay uh, where you have cracked in a very difficult geographies and where the reach is less. So if it is possible in lay, it should be possible in any other part. So it's we have some... everywhere. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So we have a couple of questions. We can take this too. So one of the participants is asking the specific task of the private sector. Uh, what are the areas of private sector in this project and uh, for the task of private sector? Maybe you could address that. Um, yeah, so the uh, the task is the private sector plans. So they designed and built all the infrastructure. Uh, all the staff related to fecal search management services is on the payroll of the private sector. They create the schedule for every month based on the geographic sort of, you know, the sh truck schedule, working hours. Uh, when is the peak tourist season? Therefore, which hotels will be okay with the truck showing up and which will not? So they do the whole scheduling. They give the schedule to the local uh, government who issues the notices. They go and uh, check the site before the truck goes. They go and check the site to make sure the septic tank is accessible and openable. Uh, whether it's a waste of a trip and money. Um, and they run the whole sort of service and the treatment plant. A lot of the cleanings happen at night. So in the summertime, the cleanings typically happen from 11 p.m. to 4 a.m. Uh, because, you know, you don't want a septic tank truck driving through. And these are, these are hill towns with small, small roads, small hotels. You, know, you don't want the big septic tank sort of you know, driving around there in the daytime. Uh, all of a sudden, we do some cleanings in the daytime, but some areas we do at night. Um, and, and then any, uh, you know, any one of customers suddenly calls saying a toilet is choked, septic tank is choked, wastewater is overflowing. Uh, we had, did a lot of work for the sewer system because when the sewer system started, there were a lot of leakages and suddenly, you know, sewage would be collecting somewhere and we would go and clean that up for them. So these are sort of the services provided. The whole entire services part is, is done by the private party and all, all infrastructure and design and engineering. Uh, only the administration part is, is taken care of by the local municipality. Right. Thank you. So we have one more question from Mr. Prajwal. He's asking, is there any change in the FS characteristics before and after use of uh, agitators in ST? I uh, I don't think so, but I don't know. I don't even know if you have done detailed enough studies. See, where we use the agitators, especially at night, uh, when the uh, septic, the, the sludge starts to harden because it's cold, then we have to use the agitator to mix it out so that the tank can, uh, can uh, you know, clean it out well. Uh, in some, because, you know, because it was annualized cleaning, um, you know, it's not very settled sludge that you tend to see. You don't get that uh, very much. So I don't think there was a big change. But we also have, you know, the planted drying bed gives you a lot of flexibility. Where if you feel that the septic, that the sludge is not fully settled, you just skip that, skip that bed for a day or two and give it more time under the sun for the uh, this thing to happen. The waste water at the end of it, again, it was slightly over-engineered because in those environments, we didn't know what the treatment characteristics would be. So we over-engineered the system a little bit. Uh, so therefore, we have consistently gotten good water quality, no problem with the with the water quality. Um, but yeah, we did some studies around the sludge characteristics, but not very extensive also. So I don't have a good answer to your, to your question. Right. Thank you, sir. There's one more question. Maybe you could respond on the chat box in the interest of time. And uh, Banerjee, sir, I see your hand raised. Do you want to add anything quickly? No, I just wanted a small, I had a small question from one of the slides what Manash spoke about, about when the administra city administration changed, there was a kind of uh, yeah. problem. What yeah. do you think? 
how yeah. did you address that and how did you mitigate that? Something so, which is a very integral part of series we would like, yes. you know, like yeah. to share. Yeah. So now, you know, to some extent, I do want uh, I do want you to recognize that this is not a standard situation right? because there was a border relationship and it's a small town and they did do care about the environment because the education and they care about the tourism. So some of these issues are less in lay than it might be in other cities. But there were two three things that happened. Um, one is, uh, you know, because the municipality had the money. See, sometimes the problem is they don't have the money, then they don't pay you, right? Yeah, because they collect the money at the start of the year, at least that was not a problem that we had to deal with. That they say, Pesa nahi, we don't have the money, how do we pay you? They had the money, but they just weren't passing the bills on time and asking too many questions. So, uh, you know, Borda got involved and had conversations with the local government authorities, uh, local leaders, uh, and with the new municipal administrator and explained that, look, this is just not cool. And we were able to mobilize some local pressure to, uh, you know, to streamline things once again. Uh, because the service quality had remained high, we had a lot of local support. Nobody could say that the service has not been good. So there's a lot of pressure we were able to bring onto the municipal administrator and the team. Also, we had good local uh, relationship with the second tier of the local administration. So even the local, the staff in the office were saying, okay, let's pass the bill, let's clear it. But the administrator was kind of, you know, there, there's no issue of, if I may say so, no, they weren't looking for money or anything of the sort of just this, usual sort of bureaucratic attitude that sometimes, uh, you know, happens. And so because we were able to apply pressure from the locals, from the political side, we had long-standing community relationships and the staff of the municipality was also very pro us because they had seen what the FSM service used to be before and after. Uh, you know, it took sort of four months to get it, but then, you know, once it started rolling again, uh, it sort of became smooth again. So it wasn't really a big issue, but I know many other cities, people have much harder problems when this situation uh, arises. Uh, but having those multiple level of relationships was definitely, and having good quality service was definitely uh, helpful for Blue Water Company. Thank you. Thank, thank, that, that helps. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much, Yosna. sir. We request you to yeah. stay with us. and. Yeah, yeah. I'll just add one more thing. We I don't know what the question and, Yeah. Sorry, Joseph. I, this about the staff. One thing I missed, actually, I should add it in the presentation. Mm -hmm. One of the things we did is we made a really nice staff room. There's almost a... 1100 square feet staff room the building was already there but we did a really nice with carpets tv heating a nice kitchen bed so that the staff when they come back from their work at either 11 p.m 3 a.m 4 a.m they were really nice space actually it's a it's actually a very nice space a lot of our office staff sort of would stay over there because they didn't want to travel back to the town at night uh you know nice bathrooms nice bed beautiful space where they could come and they would bring their families there and show them this is where we work and therefore, we, you know, we, we had almost zero sort of attrition on the staff unless they had to go far away for work or some other personal issue. People actually enjoyed the work because of the facilities and the decent. I mean, the pay was decent, not nothing extravagant, but it was good pay, good facilities, well respected and treated. Uh, we had very, we had no issues with staff, uh, you know, turnover at all, which is something you tend to find in the FSM space. So that's one thing. I thank you for the question. Thank you so much, sir. Thank, thank you for clarifying thank that. You. So. Thank you. So we'll move to the next speaker. So now you have learned about the city case study. Now we will see how a national level program like the National Mission for Namami Gange have used the public-private partnership for providing treatment facilities. So for this, I would like to invite Mr. Madhavan, who was previously working with Namami Gange and now working as an advisor for Grand Town. Uh, welcome, sir. Uh, welcome to the session. And I request you to kindly take us through the journey of Namami Gange for Thank you. Thank you, Jusna. And uh, good, up, good morning and good afternoon, good evening to all the participants. And let me share my screen. Please let me know whether it's visible or not. Is it visible? It's loading up, sir. Just, uh... Yeah, Hello. we can see it now. Okay. Please give me a Yeah, uh, now it's in full presentation mode, so there is no glitch, right? Um, yeah, it is now. Yeah, okay. Um, okay, so the, um, to talk about this Namami Genge program in a very short time is really difficult because it's a huge program. 
uh, yeah, as you look at it, the river itself is too big, actually. It's about 2,525 kilometers in length, passing through the main stem. Of, I'm talking only about the main stem of the river Ganga, not including the tributaries. There are 36 major tributaries, and uh, the main stem passes through five basin states in India. The, uh, the Uttarakhand, the Uttar Pradesh, uh, Bihar, Jharkhand, and West Bengal. Uh, there are, uh, including the tributaries, it, it, it uh, covers close to 11 states, but uh, the major issue is with the main stem. That is 2,525 kilometers. So, uh, Namami UK program was conceived in uh, 2014 uh, as an uh, integrated river basin management program uh, addressing all the aspects of river conservation. Uh, so, you can see that it's close to 424 projects were taken up till date, about close to 35,000 crores. So, out of this, the major issue the investment was in sea waste treatment. The reason being, 70% of the pollution in the river Ganga is happening through the untreated or raw sea waste flow into the river. 20% uh, is coming from the industrial wastewater, an untreated industrial wastewater. So the major investment, if you look at uh, the, in the pollution abatement, was in sea waste treatment, close 183 projects worth of 29,000 crores, uh, that's approximately uh, $4 billion size, to, for creating a treatment of about 5,700 uh, 5, odd uh, million liters of the, per day of uh, treatment capacity. This is apart from ETPs. I have not covered ETPs. It's a very small component as such when compared to the ETPs. Now, if you look at the situation, uh, uh, the, the, all the five basic major basin states, the total sewage generation is close to 12,000 MLD. And in 2014, there was hardly 3,000 or uh, 3,200 uh, MLD treatment capacity. But the availability of the capacity is not sufficient because it was not operated properly. So we'll see that issue in the next slide. So the effort was to create or the, uh, the, the fill the gap in the, uh, the sewage treatment capacity in both Namami Gange 1 and the Namami Gange program 2. So this was the genesis of how the treatment, uh, the, the development of treatment capacity in the sewage treatment uh, in the river regeneration program evolved over a period of time. If you look at the uh, uh, river regeneration for River Ganga, it started very early, somewhere in 1985. But up to, if you look at up to 2009, the the, the focus was almost on the asset creation, where the operation and maintenance was left to the ULP. So this was the problem, where you know, uh, the ULBs did not have money, they had, did not have uh, enough technical capacity, technical know-how to maintain these STPs, and that resulted in almost, uh, uh, you can say, uh, about uh, more than 50% of the STPs were uh, either not functioning properly or not meeting the BOD, uh, the, the, re the required pollution standards, uh, uh, and uh, the, uh, the the approach was more of design, build, and once again neglected, neglect the operation and end up in treatment again. But in 2009, Chen, I mean, it, uh, with the implementation of the National Ganga River Basin project funded by World Bank, uh, in fact, NMCG, National Mission for Clean Ganga, was established out of this funding, actually. This, the, the, the institution was set up uh, in 2011, and, uh, uh, and then it started. But uh, that was close to $1 billion funding from World Bank and $1.5 billion total project size, which also had a very small part of OEM included. About partly part OEM was covered in these projects, and uh, five year OEM was taken up as part of the project's approval, and uh, later it has to be taken up by the, uh, by the concerned ULBs. Now, this was also again a challenge because after five years, what will happen? And uh, in 2014, this issue was once again looked into. When the new government came into power, they announced a new program, which is called the Namami Gange Program 1, which lasted from 2015 to 2021. Funding was not an issue. Let me tell you this. Uh, uh, normally, when we talk about public-private partnership, it is said that you know for, for private funding, we are tapping this PPP model. But uh, this uh, government of India did not have that problem because the money was available. The only problem was the sustainability uh, and accountability for operation and maintenance of the so that was the, the challenge which, which was faced when the Namami program one was announced in 2014. So uh, government is looking for various uh, opportunities and how to address this. 
And as you know, uh, in uh, see in sewage treatment plan, particularly in India, uh, except for the major towns or, or uh, the metropolitan towns, sewage uh, treatment fee is not collect collected. A portion of uh, the sewage treatment is covered uh, in, under the property tax, but that is a very minuscule amount, not sufficient to run the plants or even the cap or fund the capital cost. So uh, uh, the full PPP model uh, is not possible at this juncture. So we had to look at the other options. So we looked at the, uh, the, the model applied uh, the road sector. At that point in time, road sector also had a lot of PPPs and uh, there were a lot of little of sluggish sluggishness due to uh, various reasons. So the government uh, has developed at that point in time road that, that hi hybrid annuity based PPP mode where we'll talk about the details of that model later, but we adopted that model, but with a lot of changes because it has to, uh, 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 what you call that, uh, the model has to adopt the, uh, the wastewater treatment sector. So that was the idea. So the adoption of the private, the hybrid energy PPP model was purely on, you know, uh, uh, on the uh, for for the purpose of uh, sustained performance and distinct accountability for the treat, uh, uh, collection and uh, treatment of sewage treatment plants. So from uh, from the design build neglect model, we have moved to the hybrid energy based PPP model. So this is how the model works. If you look at the model uh, the, during construction, the government pays 40% of the capital cost in certain, on achievement of certain milestones. It is not that it is paid upfront or it's not or paid in the last, but it is, there are certain milestones defined. For example, there is a two year construction period, then there could be a probably eight milestones and there uh, for, for each achievement of each milestone, the uh, government releases the, the the portion for that. So up to 40% is paid during construction phase and remaining 60% of the capital cost is paid over a period of 15 year PPP period, uh, or we, typically we call it as concession period, as quarterly annuities. So uh, uh, along with that, the, the OINDAM cost, that is the operation maintenance cost is also paid separately. And all these payments are linked to achievement of key performance indicators, which are the water quality standards to be achieved by each treatment plant. So this is uh, this is the mechanism in which these hybrid energy based PPP mode work. So the uh, uh, for the first time for the first time the shift was from the simple asset procurement and then attaching a novendum to it. It's an bundled uh, uh, procurement of services of construction of assets as well as the uh, operation of this. That means it's kind of a service program. And the service-based contracting or the performance-based contracting was initiated with clear-cut key performance indicators to be achieved by the concessionaire during the operation and also construction milestones to be achieved during constructions. A lot of improved governance has happened and the planning was also for a long term, like unlike the, what the last speaker said about the FSSM plan, we planned for about 30 years. That means long-term horizon is kept in mind for, for designing the capacity of uh, these treatment plants. Of course, there was a focus on reissue. It has a different problem in the Ganga belt because there are water rich belt. So uh, reuse, there is a limitation, but still we tried a bit uh, and tried our hand in reuse also in some of the plants. And uh, one imp two important uh, 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 unique are USPs for this model, which we adopted from the national highway model is the payment security mechanism and the coverage for interest and inflation. Now this payment security mechanism, I'll, de I'll talk in detail uh, in the next slide, but the interest and inflations are concerned all the, during construction, the, the, uh, the, 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 the construction cost is indexed to a, a combination of CPI and uh, WPI to cover any inflation risk we have uh, you have to take. During operation, the OM cost is indexed once again for at a combination of WP and CPI. When I say interest rate risk, the balance outstanding, that 60% capital investments to be paid over a period of 15 years, is paid with an interest at the rate of SBA MCLR plus 3% markup. That means SBA MCLR is our benchmark rate and 3% markup is given addition. That means we're almost covering the entire interest rate risk of the, the lenders 
uh, and partly covering the return of equity for the equity shareholders. So this has helped in uh, in mobilizing the interest of bankers, the Indian, uh, particularly Indian banks, for uh, for lending to the CBS treatment plan because it's very difficult to get funding for uh, particularly municipal assets, and that will be much more difficult in the wastewater treatment sector. So this was one of the USP which attracted the Indian banks since the in, the entire risk is interest interest rate risk is covered, and also all the players are equal footing as the interest rate is paid separately. Otherwise, the purchasing power parity might different might end up in having different interest rate for different people uh, different contractors and that will would have increased our cost uh, to the cost of ownership i'm just, uh, sorry yeah. it was not moving so i was just waiting for that okay so this is the typical transaction model in which you will see that the ulb in, uh, in, in nmc nmc is not directly uh, implementing the projects in india uh, the water is a state subject and wastewater is a municipal subject. So uh, the, uh, uh, the the project has to be implemented. The ownership has to be with the ULB. So the ULB will be implementing the project and also hand over the land at ROW to the project SPV, which is developed, which is uh, formed or incorporated by the selected bidder. Now, an MCG will open an escrow account. This is the typically the payment security mechanism which I was talking about. And under this mechanism, NMCG is opening an escrow account in which NMCG will deposit two years of uh, two milestone payment uh, during construction period and during operation period, two years of annuity interest and the OM cost deposited in the account. And it is visible to the all the, uh, the, the project SPV and the bankers who are lending to them. So NMCG enters into a tripartite agreement between with, uh, the executing agent, the ULB, and the identified uh, partner. Apart from this, NMCG also appoints a project engineer to oversee the construction and ensure the quality of construction and, and operation of the projects. Now, uh, the bankers come in, uh, uh, bankers directly fund the, the project SPV for, uh, for, the, for that 60% uh, of the construction cost. Now, there is a restriction. 60% they cannot take loan. They can take only up to 45% of the cap capital cost as loan. So that means there is a 15% equity they have to bring in to ensure that this provision is kept to ensure that there is skin in the game. Otherwise, uh, 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 you know, uh, the, we may face difficulties in the later stage. So then the right hand side, you would see how a typical, uh, the flow happens in terms of uh, the once the contracting happens, once the uh, once the uh, uh, contractor is identified, which you call it as appointed date, the concession agreement is signed, which you call it as appointed date, and there is a four month time available for CPs, which is, CPs means conditions precedent, to be achieved by both the concessionaire as well as the uh, all the all the related parties. And once the condition precedents are achieved, the effective date is announced. The effective date means the date on which the construction starts. So after signing of the construction, four months down the line, the effective date happens. And the construction period is typically 20, 21 months. So in big projects, it could be extended up to 30 months, but it's normally we have kept 21 months as the standard time, the period, and that's sufficient enough for us. And three months of uh, trial uh, trial and run for commissioning. And then once that is done and the, uh, and the plan starts achieving uh, the, the, the the pollution parameters, the commercial operation date is announced, and then the, from there, the OEM period of 15 years starts. After 15 years uh, of OEM, the transfer date is achieved, uh, uh, transfer date comes and the uh, assets are hand, uh, handed over back to the ULBs. So, till now, what has happened is we initially started with 2017 with the, with the new STPs. Primarily, these were Varanasi and Haridwar, 50 MLD STP planned in Varanasi and 82 MLD STP, two STP plans in uh, Haridwar were the first set of projects which were taken up under the PPP mode. Uh, uh, they are primarily simple projects, greenfield projects. But when we looked at the uh, the situation, there are you know new projects will anywhere run because we are funding and we are also monitoring it properly and the the structure is put in place, the institutional mechanism is in place. But what will happen to the existing asset? Because major uh, major existing plants are also not operational. So we in in from in 2018. From Mathura onwards, we brought we brought the new concept, which is called one city, one operator. That means the existing treatment plants and treatment infrastructure in the in the city is uh, packaged with 
or all packaged with the new treatment plants and then given under a single contract to a single operator. So that may, that's from there, this concept of one city, one operator concept came. It will ensure single ownership and accountability for collection and treatment of sewage for the entire city. Now, I wanted to uh, highlight here, sewer network is not part of our process because sewer network takes a lot of time. We are in a hurry to um, um, restore the, uh, the quality of river in the what, uh, sorry, water in the river. So we adopted the uh, city uh, method called uh, uh, diversion, you know, uh, in, uh, what you call it, diversion of the treatment, uh, from, uh, diversion of the sewage flowing into the river through small drains and then taking the sewage treatment plant and treating it. So interception diversion was the main, uh, it was integral part of this project and the construction of the streets. So in Mathura, this, we, we brought for the first time the rehabilitation of existing brownfield assets as well as the interception diversion structures, their main pipelines, and then uh, construction of the new STPs also put together in a single package. In Mathura, I also had a, a reuse uh, component in it, which we'll discuss in later slides as part of the case studies. From there, we moved on to further to bigger cities. Mathura was small, in fact. Uh, we are moved on to bigger cities like Kanpur, Hauda, Bali, Baranagar, and Allahabad, or Prayagraj, where uh, the existing the sewage treatments capacity in, this, uh, in the city has been integrated with the new uh, new estates. Uh, now, in Hauda, it was a re it's another experiment where it's not only existing treatment capacity in the city but also nearby cities. For example, it was the integration of three major towns: Hauda. Bali and Baranagar in West Bengal put together to a single contract. So this is another uh, another move or step to ensure that the size is attractive to the private sector partners. And then in Patna, in Dega and Kankarbad, there's a, uh, we integrated two different contracts. That means the cyber network, which was taken under 425 kilometers of cyber network under in Dega and Kankarbad, were integrated with the 150 MLD of STP uh, in, uh, uh, in in the, that area. So STP is uh, under uh, hybrid entity based PPP mode, where civil network is under DBOT mode, so typically EPC plus Vendor mode. So that is totally uh, EPC plus Vendor mode, and this is a ham. Uh, in in that DBOT or EPC plus Vendor mode, 100% payment is made for the construction, and the Vendor is paid uh, during the Vendor period. So if you look at overall, uh, till now, 32 projects in 22 packages have been taken up and uh, about 18 are awarded. And you can see the uh, numbers. And many of them are operational now. This Varanasi, Haridwar, Mathura, uh, um, uh, Alaha, Prayagraj are all operational. Kanpur and uh, Howda, some of the packages, some of the portion of them are operational, but uh, uh, they are some of them are ready to complete to this between, between COVID came and there was some bit delay in, in construction that happened. Uh, but we have moved also one step ahead in uh, in the new projects and in Agra, Meerut, and Saharanpur, we brought in a new concept which is called IBRD guarantee. That means, uh, as, as, as if you if you remember, I said in the beginning, NMCG used to open, open up an escrow account, deposit money in that account. Now, under IBRD guarantee scheme. World Bank is going to stand as a guarantor against the payment of NMC, National Mission for Clean Ganga. And uh, against that, the, the deposit in the, in the escrow account has been reduced to one quarter payment or, or one milestone payment during construction and one quarter payment uh, uh, during the operational period. So there's another uh, uh, innovation we have brought in, the, the multilateral agency guarantee scheme. Uh, to attract more uh, private partners. You can, I am not reading the numbers. You can see the numbers uh, till now, how, how much fund has been, uh, you know, private sector fund has been mobilized. Could you please some... wind up quickly in uh, the interest yeah. of time? So I'm just uh, one, one or two slides are only there. And uh, uh, so this, I'm not going to read this slide. So we had a lot of, uh, market consultations and uh, initially uh, there was rush for the PPP players and then that uh, it, it, it dwindled down. Then, say, then we, we had a, uh, uh, we restructured our procurement uh, criteria, uh, selection criteria, and then later we could see that the number of bidders increasing from 
10 to 17 in the case of Viret, it's these are all achievement or the first time happening in the waste water sector. Otherwise, you hardly get players because it's uh, being a local subject. And you can see the major developers and bankers who have funded uh, uh, our projects. So two case uh, studies I have taken up. Quickly, we'll go through is Mathura sewage scheme. It's a brownfield assets and a combination of greenfield assets. You can see that. And also had a 20 MLT tertiary treatment plant to supply uh, the tertiary treated wastewater to IOC refinery. Uh, uh, the water cost is close to 250 crores and wind up cost is about uh, uh, 187 crores. Okay. And uh, this was awarded to the company called Triveni. Uh, it, it went well, the construction was well, but the, a, lot of, the, a lot of issues came uh, in two major areas. One was there was delay in handing over of uh, pumping existing pumping stations, a land for the existing uh, for the pumping station. This is one issue. And second issue was while designing the plant or while uh, conceiving the plant, the the low, I, ULB did not take into account the chemical infusion from the some of the nearby textile industries into the sewage treatment plant. So ultimately, when the TTR was constructed, there was a huge uh, high chemical oxygen demand uh, levels happening in the treated wastewater and then the TTRO plant could not be operated fully. So partially it was operated in the, and the water was uh, delivered to the IOCL refinery, but now they are, they are, uh, uh, they are, they are retro retrofitting it to meet the requirement. Similarly, in the case of Prayagraj, this was 250 for MLD total uh, uh, existing and then uh, 72 MLD new. So if you look at uh, their three packages, greenfield STPs in one package and the existing STPs in two different packages. And uh, this went very well, in fact. The Adani was the, uh, the player and uh, the construction. Of course, the COVID affected a bit, but then uh, the, 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 uh, the, the package uh, three and two uh, successfully happened. Package one, there is a delay in uh, package one means the greenfield projects. There's a delay in construction. The re simple reason being uh, the land handover in one of the STPs was delayed by the ULB, so that led in uh, led to uh, delay in construction as well. And there are also higher flow happening in in some of the STPs. So, so estimation of the flow in the STPs was also a kind of a problem. Uh, and then ha happening of more melas and events happening continuously that you know, affected the construction period. Um, some of these are some of the learnings. Uh, if you prepare the proper uh, the project properly during DPR stage, then you will end up in getting a bankable project. Proper writing of the scope of work is very, very important because we have seen after award of the work or start of instruction, the scope changes due to uh, certain, um, uh, what you called, uh, um, missings in the uh, DPR stage. And then uh, sometimes there are hap delays happening in the procurement due to administrative reasons with uh, at the ULB level poor supervision of ESS implementation and land acquisition is a major problem. After post award, they change the land and then uh, you know the project get delayed. For for another major, another issue was uh, the business as usual problem with the ULPs because they are not uh, you know used to this PPP projects. So we have to do, do a lot of capacity building over a period of time to make them you know uh, raise up to the expectations of the private sector. And uh, so you would be you would be thinking what would have happened to the river. You can see that from 2014-15 to 2022, lot of improvement has happened with the river water quality, and the two stretches are, are totally not polluted, and uh, remaining two stretches are uh, in the category of five, which is very close to uh, unpolluted. Soon after completion of the construction of all the STPs, it is expected that these also become. Non, uh, unpolluted by, we hope it, it happened by 2026 or 27. So uh, uh, this pro program has received a lot of international accolades. One important, uh, 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 this was, uh, it has been recognized as one among the 10 world uh, um, uh, eco restoration flagship initiatives uh, in uh, COP15 uh, that happened in Montreal, Canada. So these are this is all what I have to say. Thank you so much. If you have any queries, I'm ready to take some queries. Right. Thank you so much, sir, for the very detailed presentation and explaining about the HAM model.
So there are a couple of questions Dr. Banerjee tried response, the responding them. Maybe uh, you can respond on the chat box in the interest of time. So just want to highlight from this session that the HAM model uh, we've already we've also tried in uh, uh, fecal sludge treatment plants in AP and Telangana, and uh, it is one of the successful models. Uh, it's hybrid annuity model where the private and the public have the skin in the game from the beginning to the contract end, which is like ten years. So just wanted to highlight that. Thank you so much, sir. Maybe you could stay with us and respond to the questions on the chat box. So we'll move to the next presenter. Uh, so we have uh, uh, heard about the city case study and also the national level uh, case study. Now we'll move to the infrastructure wise. So uh, we always have this problem of uh, defunct FST, uh, STPs, especially when it is at the decentralized level, when like private STPs in a commercial or in a residential household, we always uh, kind of have a problem with them in terms of functionality. So uh, Banka Valo Limited, a company, uh, they have come up with an innovative model of public-private partnership, which is a SaaS model, where they are, uh, which is a STP on service. So we have Mr. Vishal from Banka Valo, who will be taking us through this concept of SaaS and how, ST, uh, how the maintenance of the STP can be made in partnership with the private. So some of uh, your, the participants got an opportunity to visit one of his sites during the SANIT tour. So it's the same uh, model that we are discussing. So over to you, Vishal, sir. Thank you, Josna, and uh, yeah. good evening, everybody. Uh, and thank you, Madhav, uh, Madhava, sir. Uh, it was very good to hear the NMCG model and how it has actually played out. So, uh, so our model has been taken out from those learnings and some of our experience talking to the people in the market. So I will quickly uh, uh, share my screen and then uh, take everybody what we are trying to do. Is it visible now, ma'am? Yes, yes, everybody? we can. Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. So, uh, so I quickly start. So I, uh, so I'm Vishal Murarka. I'm the CEO of Banka Bio, and we are trying to do a few things. And as uh, uh, Manas already spoke about uh, the FSM or FSTPs in Lay, we have been doing that successfully here in Telangana and Andhra Pradesh under the HAM model, which I'm not going to talk about today. Uh, uh, but uh, so as a company, uh, we 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 started to talk and uh, meet a lot of people who. Uh, just a minute, sir. Uh, yeah. yeah. So uh, when we go and we do uh, this STP discussion, because we are into water and wastewater management, and when we meet uh, these developers or residents, or even I am a resident of a high-rise building here in Hyderabad. So these are the common complaints uh, that any uh, resident or a visitor have related to STP in a system. One, uh, it's poor and inconsistent quality of water. And uh, we all would be aware about this. There is foul odor in the society or commercial area because of STPs. If you go to a retail mall or any other uh, mall like that, uh, then inconsistent performance of ONM vendors. So somebody else has done the STP, and as uh, uh, NMCG uh, sir was explaining, that the asset was bought by the government and it was left ONM to a third party or any ULB or any other uh, vendor. So obviously the incentive was very limited uh, to run the plant. Uh, then frequent breakdown in the ONM, and that is the reason why more than 50% as sir suggested not working under the clean Ganga mission. And uh, But in, in the societies and commercial in the urban city, uh, we are seeing almost 80 to 90% either they are not working or they are underperforming. And then untreated water is uh, discharged regularly to the drain. The government is setting up a lot of uh, these STPs, which is uh, the centralized STP. But uh, until we really treat our decentralized uh, wastewater, which is getting generated from these large uh, apartment complexes or commercial, uh, they continue to uh, you know discharge uh, water in the drain. Then obviously, uh, the managing committee need to manage the local uh, pollution control board if they are not adhering to the pollution control uh, board's discharge requirement. 
So th th these are very common uh, problems. So to to so, so so problem I have just listed here on the left hand side. So what we are saying dysfunctional or obsolete STPs, other management issues related to uh, uh, the running the STP plan. Then ONM expertise. There is a lack of ONM ex expertise because the society they go for a lowest cost, uh, you know, supplier of manpower. So it's it 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 in a sense it becomes like a manpower contract rather than an operation and maintenance contract. So so people will say, okay, put two people, run it for twenty four by seven. Uh, what they are doing, nobody is really interested to know until you know nobody is complaining. Then the finally is the lack of trust or capital for rebuilding. So most of the societies or commercial complexes or retail mall, uh, you know, once the asset is ready, uh, uh, the building is ready, nobody wants to really invest in a big way to do the re-engineering or rebuild the STP. Uh, uh, so, so these were the problem that, uh, you know, a, a, a regular STP in a urban center would face. And so what we did was like uh, similarly taking uh, learnings from the other PPP model that, okay, uh, we will offer STP as a service. So we are calling it urban SaaS as our model, urban STP as a service. Uh, and this is uh, more uh, uh, for the urban center rather than we are not talking about the municipality ones. We are talking about more on the private ones. So here what we are uh, tying up, we are tying up the, the yeah. capital yeah, hello. Sorry about that. You can continue. Yeah. So, so here, what we are trying to do is we are trying tying up the capital. Uh, then we are also uh, doing the re-engineering of the plant. And then we are taking it for a long-term maintenance contract. Now, so if you see, like, once I put in my capital, so it is my responsibility to make sure the plant is effectively designed and works well because I'm also taking a long-term contract. So although the contracts are not as long as uh, 15 years, but we are talking about seven year and a 10 year contract. And I will show you a case study where we have already done this and we have six such STP assets, which is already functional here in the city of Hyderabad. Uh, and, and then all put together, we are also doing water analytics dashboard where we are seeing the performance, the flow measurements, the quality measurements, all of that we are able to bring on board online uh, for these STPs. So, so model, uh, how it works, uh, it's a long-term service-based uh, contracts. Uh, similarly, uh, here, here uh, uh, if you see in the NMCG case was more the government and then the banking and then a private player who was partnership here. But here we don't have government as a, uh, as a counterparty. So we have the, the resident welfare association or an asset owner and we as a developer and then we are also able to mobilize capital i will share some of those details as well uh, then uh, we we do take 100 percent responsibility of operation and maintenance and then it is a, it is a predictable long-term cost for the establishment so uh, we are able to tell them you know how much they need to pay every month how much water they will save every month in terms of the fresh water consumption and, and we are able to map uh, a full win-win case study for them. And, uh, and it also brings a lot of water security for the society and uh, long-term environment discharge compliance. So that, that is one of the big things that why all of us are doing STP. So this model is able to address that as well. So uh, in terms of execution, we do a 100-day uh, target to commission the system right from signing because these are smaller systems could be half a, so half MLD onwards. So we are doing normally, uh, uh, they are like half MLD, one MLD or up to three MLD. Right now, three MLD, we are negotiating a contract, uh, but we have done multiple uh, 600 KLD, 1.2 MLD. So those are the sizes that we are right now focusing on. And excess water is discharged or sold to the nearby community. This is a very important thing. Now in one of the uh, residential complex, the, the society is only able to utilize 55% of the recycled water. So what we are doing is like the, the remaining water we are putting in the rain, rain harvesting pit and, and remaining we are also selling to the buyer who is taking that water and giving to an IT uh, complex. So, you know, it, it's sort of getting into a circular economy where we are using water for recycling. We are also able to supply to other people 
and also uh, uh, recharging our underground uh, thing. So uh, I, I just want to take uh, an, uh, this opportunity to show you a case study that we did in Hyderabad. So, uh, so we had, a, uh, I will quickly take you through the technology. So first the technology, which was earlier uh, was a rotary media bioreactor, which we converted into a membrane bioreactor. And we used DuPont membrane as our new technology. Uh, so in the first uh, case, it was 1500 uh, KLD, 1.5 MLD uh, capacity plant. Uh, which uh, was redesigned to 1200 KLD because 1500 was not required in the first place. Uh, the early issue was they were spending, number one, there were a lot of foul odor in the plant area, poor quality of water. The water volume was very low. And, and, and in the summer months, four or five months in Hyderabad, where the water shortage is there, uh, they were spending almost 40 to 50 lakh rupees, so like 10 lakhs per month. Uh, only to buying towards the tanker water. And obviously, the overall cost of O&M was very high. And what we did was obviously uh, bring down the odor. Quality of treatment was very good. I will show you all the pictures. And uh, seven, this is a seven-year contract. And we were also able to reduce the footprint by almost 30 to 35%. So you see here on the left, left side, uh, this is an old plant uh, in a very dilapidated condition. You cannot really go there. And this is the right side, the plant that was re-engineered uh, in the same footprint. Uh, you can see uh, it doesn't look like an STP plant. So this is the old plant uh, with the RMBR reactor and, and UF membrane. And you can see the quality of water with high dirt turbidity, COD, BOD were very high. Uh, so now this is the plant that we have done. So you can see uh, the layout has been all uh, done very well. We have uh, done a full online monitoring of the system, what is happening, the quality and the uh, uh, quantity parameter. And you can see the quality of water, which is this, uh, uh, which is like crystal clear water that we are able to supply to the society every day. And if you see the fruit footprint point of view, uh, 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 we have already given away a lot of space. And this space has been taken up by the society to create a squash court and a play area, uh, internal play area, which was non-existent earlier. So, uh, so, so this is what we did uh, in this uh, whole uh, process. And uh, we have taken the learnings from uh, uh, other PPP projects in the government space. And we were, uh, we were able to uh, mobilize capital uh, uh, from uh, water equity, which was uh, uh, which which looked at this model and they believed that this could be a very important uh, uh, piece for the urban uh, STP. You know the the way we are looking at urban STPs because every building has STP in the urban center, and even if you look at uh, six cities in India, uh, that will solve a lot of load on the centralized STP system that the government is setting up. So, so this is what our model is, and uh, we were able to uh, mobilize capital. And as I explained to you, that we have already been able to raise money to, uh, and we have been running this for more than two years now. And uh, these are very fast turnaround project, uh, quite decent IRR. So, so, so that's that's end of my presentation. I'm happy to take any question uh, around it. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much, sir. Are there any questions from the participants? Anybody would like to open your mic and ask? Okay, I think they might come in the chat box. Thank you so much for the interesting presentation. So it's one of the uh, good concepts that where often times we see a lot of STPs defunct and this model can be really helpful. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Uh, we request you to please uh, stay on. And if there are any questions, uh, please answer sure. them on the chat box. Thanks a lot. Sure, sure. So now thank we you. will, yeah. So we will move to our last presentation. So we have discussed now multiple case studies. And the final one is on public toilets, which is one of the uh, pressing problems of all the cities and even across different countries. So how to maintain the public toilet. So now we have uh, a member joining from Exora Limited. They have come up with a new concept called Lou Cafe, where they have attached a 
cafe to a toilet and made it a world class. So I now request Mr. Uh, Chakravarti to take us through this innovative concept of new cafe. Yeah. Good evening, everyone. Uh, mm -hmm. I think uh, it has been a wonderful evening uh, talking about the private uh, public private uh, partnership model in all the sanitation and uh, uh, water sector. Uh, I, will, I will conclude my uh, uh, presentation with a, a small thing that uh, uh, the, world, the world sanitation has been a, a, a challenge and uh, uh, been, a, been a forerunner from the Index Valley Civilization, which we which we talk about around 5,000 years back. So we have come a long way. There has been a, a major uh, contributor to world uh, civilization, and uh, uh, the, the civilization has been a cradle in India. So what happens in uh, in the urban and the new setup is the same issue where public-private partnerships become successful when uh, we have a sustainable model and uh, we have a uh, operation generating model which uh, my earlier speakers were talking about. So all these uh, public washrooms uh, in context of public washrooms were basically uh, public washrooms which are built by the government and uh, uh, certain uh, certain models which were operated by NGOs. Uh, but what happened is uh, uh, with the rapid uh, urbanization and uh, uh, increase in the uh, increase in the urban uh, urban uh, population. Uh, the requirement for a safe hygiene and a standard washroom for women, children, and the old old age people had been always a uh, uh, always a requirement in the urban sector. Uh, so that's where the uh, uh, we uh, found this uh, company called Zero, a new cafe being the brand of Zero. So uh, when we when we talk about the word uh, new cafe, uh, people were always uh, reluctant that how can we accommodate build uh, uh, along with a cafe or a cafe built up with the uh, uh, built up with the uh, with a cafe or a toilet together. Uh, will people use it or will people uh, be ready to buy something in a cafe? And because it's attached to your wallet, uh, then uh, the only question which came, the only answer which we could tell is. Every restaurant, every house you go inside is a washroom. Uh, uh, there might be number of users may be high, but when you make the standard of washrooms into a uh, usable one, I think uh, the you know, situation is a winnable uh, product, which is called the Lugate. The idea started way back in uh, 2016, where we were uh, doing a study about uh, washrooms in uh, various segments of the market, from malls to to uh, hotel, restaurants, and public products. That's where we found that uh, whatever challenges which we had uh, uh, during this uh, period uh, had always been a challenge where uh, the, the urban washroom or the public washroom segment is always a concrete built civil structure, which uh, again is maintained by one person who collects your fees and uh, uh, pass on the sanitation work to somebody else. But, uh, uh, the, the the challenging question was only one that the, the urban public were, uh, were uh, using these toilets. I think 90% of women uh, who uh, are in the city uh, don't use the public toilet. So uh, we focused on uh, on a on a washroom which is uh, which which any woman can use it, uh, feel safe and hygienic on this, uh, and attach to sustainability. Uh, angle to it. Uh, I think once the Swatch Bharat uh, mission uh, came in, I think the the focus was on toilets, and uh, we also took that challenge and presented various models to the government, and that's how uh, uh, at that how the cafe was started. The first uh, unit was set up in 2018 uh, uh, in Hyderabad. It was uh, uh, it was uh, uh, it was inaugurated by uh, uh, Minister KTR along with. Uh, with the of industries also. Uh, so during that time, I was uh, asking only one thing: whether uh, your model is expandable uh, in Hyderabad and other cities. We said yes, sir. We are, it is a doable model, and that's how the challenge came up to uh, uh, to how how we take up this unit. And the unit economics were very simple. It was a PPP model. The government uh, participates uh, uh, along with us in the in providing us. Uh, uh, the space for uh, building up and 
uh, uh, the utility connections like water and electricity. Uh, the sustainability comes from running a small cafe attached to this, uh, where uh, we also kept in mind that civil structures uh, in those or near the road can always be uh, uh, susceptible to breakages because uh, the city is expanding, the roads are expanding, the pathways are expanding. So we always wanted to have a uh, model which uh, is also uh, uh, which is also uh, uh, economically and uh, environmentally friendly. That's where we, we uh, designed washrooms which are made up of uh, uh, skipping containers. Uh, skipping containers are like the containers who had uh, uh, who had uh, spent their life uh, around 15 to 20 years in the sea and then it comes back. Uh, why did we use uh, skipping containers? Was it, we didn't want to add more uh, resources to whatever it's already uh, uh, it's already there in the uh, in the environment, so we wanted to reuse every material. Even the ACP we use, we pick it up from the scrap, uh, and what we use is uh, as a recycled model. Uh, what you can see is the actual uh, uh, image, uh, the three D image of it. I have pictures which can do it. Uh, so the growth study uh, started uh, even during COVID. Uh, we were the we were given a challenge to build uh, 200 plus units in various uh, districts of Telangana. So we operate this uh, in the I think one question was asked between uh, does the OPEX be done by the, uh, the the cafe operator or the space operator? Yes, uh, we have an argument. Uh, uh, I'll talk about it in the coming uh, slides. Actually. Uh, can I have to the next slides? So what we have done is to uh, take a space which is around 60% uh, we uh, make it to the washroom uh, and 40% to the cafe space. Uh, the cafe remains clean and neat. Uh, uh, that ensures the toilet also remains clean and neat. It is a shipment for the operator or the, uh, the unit where in case the washrooms are not operational, we have a monitoring system which can uh, give us the data uh, saying the washroom is closed or unused or locked. Uh, so uh, we get to know within uh, 10 to 15 minutes of uh, the opening of the shop. Uh, technology plays a very important role. Uh, we want to build a model which is uh, uh, not really based on manual uh, monitoring because again, uh, the manual monitoring has its own uh, restriction and constraints. So what we have done is to done a, do a shop where uh, the shopkeeper or the unit operator opens the uh, uh, opens the, opens the unit in the morning, he takes up the, uh, uh, cleans up the washroom, ensure all the utilities are provided. Then he clips all the pictures of the washroom along with the key availability. Then uh, those washroom uh, pictures go to a supervisory uh, role where they uh, approve the uh, opening of the shop in the morning. So once the approval is given, uh, in the beta stage of uh, this, we are having a, a OTP-based uh, lock mechanism, uh, OTP is generated and given to the uh, shopkeeper. Again, it is in a trial stages with around 10 units here uh, following this, but the app is already up and running. So what happens is that we uh, we uh, work these models, uh, which are uh, environmental friendly, economically sustainable, and uh, socially sustainable also. Uh, what happens in this is, uh, unless we have a, a OPEX model, which is uh, sustainable, we cannot run this uh, uh, type of operation. So we are ensuring that uh, that these models operate uh, and uh, self-sustain this. Uh, talking about the models, we have a uh, we have a model where we have a small kiosk, which is a, a ten by ten kiosk model, where uh, where the after part of this is a ten shop and the two washrooms on the side, which we call it as a mini, which is below hundred square feet. Then we have a model which is the cafe standard, which is around 170 to 250. This is again a container based model and uh, uh, I'm made of this. We have one which is the cafe pink, which is uh, made uh, especially for women, uh, which has uh, which has the uh, uh, facilities of a baby feeding room, napkin, sanitary napkin dispenser, disposal methods, and everything. Uh, uh, apart from that, we have a 40 feet model also. Uh, this is not just that uh, we have deep models only. Uh, it, it can be also uh, designed uh, according to the space availability in the uh, corporation and the real I think we're going to Next slide, please.
So what we've done with Mini is it's not just a, a, a cafe shop or a thing. We also have designed this to be a mechanic shop, uh, which also plays a very important in our street vending customer uh, service, where uh, we are empowering street vendors to be a legitimate uh, business entrepreneurs, uh, where uh, we always have uh, seen the government emphasis on street vending uh, as a uh, as a profession also. So the government's uh, the government's vision to have street vending as a uh, authorized business is also uh, taken care of this by this uh, models. Uh, Fifty percent of uh, the unit operators uh, prefer uh, women operators because they understand the safety of women, uh, the hygiene of washing and the cleaning thing. Uh, yes, these uh, toilets are inclusive. We have general neutral toilets which are uh, uh, which are already been added to our home and we are also making uh, uh, ensuring that uh, uh, the gender the gender is also included. the new cafe uh, chennai is one such model where we have uh, a high number of uh, uh, transgender use usage uh, uh, of washrooms also when we built uh, these units we also ensure that we don't become a uh, encroachment in the workspace so, uh, as you see we have uh, pathway where we have clearly demarcated uh, pathways and uh, uh, ensured that we are not obstructing to the uh, movement of people. Uh, Look Cafe is always considered as a uh, street furniture. Uh, that means that it is it is an essential part of urban infrastructure which is built like a bus stop, uh, like a uh, 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 like a small kiosk, and uh, it becomes a part of the uh, city uh, infrastructure not rather being considered as an encroachment uh, can I have the next slide please? Uh, so in case there is a there is a requirement for uh, uh, for shifting this so these are made up of uh, prefab uh, and the structures where we can uh, always take up the uh, utilities and uh, lift it up within two hours of time and uh, relocate to another place so that uh, you know so that there is no loss in the uh, infrastructure assets. Uh, in case it's a civil built structure, this is this has to be broken down, uh, which is the case always, which happens in cities. Uh, for example, you can see this as a pink lit cafe. It is run and maintained by women, uh, uh, especially for women. We don't uh, uh, have a unit which is operated uh, for men. It's especially only for women. Actually. So we also encourage Nari Shakti as such and the thing. Uh, these are the interior images. I will quickly, uh, I can quickly go through these images. And uh, what happens here is that uh, uh, we, being in the sanitation field for the last 15 years, have expertise in maintaining what things uh, in case of smell levels, in case of leakages, uh, because we were maintaining uh, certain uh, uh, buildings which are uh, larger buildings in the public space also. Uh, our team is around 2,500 plus for sanitation reserve. Uh, apart from uh, the operating team of the new cafe, we have a sanitation business. Uh, uh, it has uh, the city cleaning uh, uh, projects uh, of uh, uh, the city of Hyderabad also. Can, can you the next slide, please? Uh, these, are, these are various models. Uh, uh, we don't build uh, washroom, which looks like washroom, but uh, we ensure that the aesthetics are maintained in the washrooms. and. Uh, uh, we don't have to feel that it is a stinky place. You know, the, the, the image of uh, the vision of New Cafe is to uh, is to change the perception of a public toilet uh, where it was always considered to be a filthy place to go in. But uh, we ensure that the uh, we ensure that uh, the idea of uh, public washroom is changed to this model. Actually, uh, these are certain images uh, from this one. Uh, these are the Look Cafe features uh, where we have virtual gardens, pink trenches, we have free Wi Fi for people. It's always uh, 24 by surveillance. Uh, we have we have places where we uh, don't have a sewer system, we have incorporated biodigesters. We are working uh, uh, working in the next uh, uh, project for Look Cafe, which will be an off grid model where uh, the water, uh, water electricity, and the uh, a utility needed for the unit will be uh, uh, generated from the unit itself, so that uh, uh, it can be it can be placed in places where there is no sewer network or 
availability of uh, uh, sewage disposal systems actually. Uh, this is again uh, the future which uh, we can uh, find it in all the Lika codes which are coming up. We are also part of the uh, what uh, Toilet 2.2 mission where uh, again uh, the uh, the SDG goals uh, which are met uh, 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 which uh, comes into SDG goals where we have around 12 uh, goals which we are meeting towards uh, the thing. So it becomes a model which is uh, expandable in various cities. We have a proven model of this uh, into uh, existing also. So we are expand we are, at present we are operating around 250 uh, units in five states, uh, starting from uh, Srinagar uh, uh, to Chennai, uh, we have Mumbai, Hyderabad, Telangana, and many states of Telangana and uh, towns and the districts of Telangana. We are talking about uh, this technology where we have an app where we can find uh, new cafes uh, present in the vicinity, and we are working towards. Uh, uh, towards the system where the entire uh, uh, network is uh, controlled through an app and uh, uh, operated through an app. Can I go next slide, please? Next slide, please. Uh, this is the same thing which we talked about with Cafe technology. Uh, Look Cafe becomes a platform for startups uh, who are in what's uh, blockchain IoT, where uh, it becomes an experimental box for uh, people uh, who want to experiment their. Uh, uh, the products uh, inside uh, uh, inside a unit. You know, so we are also tied up with uh, uh, Aspi uh, uh, under the guidance of Professor Shari for this, and uh, we are also working with um, uh, T Hub and uh, many other uh, innovators in this, and uh, which helps us to uh, know about the different technologies and the uh, developments which we can always incorporate in the new cafes of Speaker. Can I have the next uh, slide, please? So what we have done is to uh, study the impact of what Lucafe has made. So we had uh, uh, we had made a uh, uh, we made a uh, story book like thing where uh, our street vending uh, people who were who were at, uh, who were who were operating in the roads were given spaces to operate and how the how Lucafes have changed their uh, changed their life. Uh, I would be happy. Uh, I can share a copy with uh, Jason and my uh, you can circulate the same thing, uh, uh, the same thing in the other uh, with the parties themselves. So, can I have the next slide, please? Next slide, please. So, uh, these are the uh, awards uh, we were uh, we were awarded the uh, uh, CIA's most uh, innovative company uh, and uh, services company uh, in 2019. Uh, we have been awarded uh, uh, awarded as the most uh, uh, valuable. Public space company, uh, public space in sense, the urban space, urban free space sector by uh, uh, Fiki and uh, IOT and the best engagement model for the year 2013 by uh, Indian Sanitation Coalition and uh, Fiki also. Uh, we are the only uh, wash, uh, uh, only wash uh, startup uh, to have received the uh, uh, the income uh, the income tax exemption in Ontario. So. We are part of the startup uh, uh, startup infrastructure in India. Can the next slide? So uh, these are the certain things which uh, uh, look at is covered in the media. I suppose uh, 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 the presentation will be shared uh, along with uh, all the participants and uh, 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 I think uh, this would be uh, uh, this would be a model which. Uh, uh, which we can always replicate in the uh, in the UITs, in the uh, metro cities, in in places where uh, uh, where uh, sustainability of water is becoming an issue. We can always look at the uh, cafe as a model to be uh, replicated. That uh, so uh, that's all from my side. Uh, I can take up any uh, uh, questions in case uh, if there are any. Thank you so much for the presentation, an interesting one concept. So there are a couple of questions. Uh, so maybe you could highlight a little bit on the o and component. So what about the, uh, do all, so there's a question from Ms. Srijana saying, uh, do all the OPEX cost is managed by the cafe? 
with the use of toilet and also maybe you could highlight about how the OM do you collect any user charges, how the cafe is maintained or that. Uh, yes, uh, the OPEX model is built upon uh, the operation of uh, the coffee shop uh, or the retail space. It, 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 it does not need only to be a cafe shop, coffee shop or uh, it can be a repair shop, puncture shop or a medical shop. Uh, what happens is uh, we have tied up with people who can uh, who can part a small part of their revenues towards maintaining this lesson. and uh, we have a team of uh, people who are who are there on ground to maintain this lesson. So uh, the, the office pays office matlab the uh, revenue from the uh, cafe or the running the POS place is uh, the office model which sustains the work from uh, maintenance also. Right. Uh, so, what are the key challenges to buy government in space? Uh, 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 key challenges in the government is uh, uh, we are still in the uh, still in uh, the civil construction model where uh, the government find it always uh, safer uh, to uh, to show them as a showcase. But uh, uh, let us understand uh, we don't uh, charge any user fees, so the government uh, does not have to. Uh, take up uh, any uh, uh, any finances towards this. Certain governments, certain uh, non-metro cities, yes, we do uh, we do uh, partner with the government or the EU group for uh, for a certain uh, certain uh, uh, capital cost, which they can always be a part of. But in uh, in major of the metros, we don't usually take up uh, uh, any capital cost from the EU Yes, uh, the toilet can be uh, used by uh, the disabled. We have that access uh, uh, in the washrooms, and uh, the washroom sizes are uh, calculated along uh, with the uh, with the movement of the wheel uh, wheelchair. Uh, How do you assure that the government uh, that the customer don't make uh, the cafe when they enter? Uh, see, it is uh, again a uh, perception change. Uh, Whenever you go to a clean place, you always uh, you always tend to make it uh, 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 less dirty than what you see in a public space. Uh, because uh, uh, yes, uh, open urination, open urination is still a issue in the city. But we are working with the ULBs to understand the uh, 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 pattern of uh, people using this washroom and uh, being on roads. We have people who spit uh, in you urinal, but uh, what we have found is uh, people have uh, people in cities have been uh, uh, have been undergoing a behavioral change where they they understand the uh, understand the importance of a public question. And uh, as I said, uh, women always want to use a safer and a cleaner toilet. Uh, men usually don't use the washroom majorly, but use the urinal. So. Uh, whatever happens in the urinal, uh, uh, we have a control over it. I think the behavioral change is again a major part. When you keep, uh, when you keep posters, when you keep uh, uh, smileys on this place, and people tend to uh, tend to uh, tend to use it in a, a proper way than a thing. But uh, yes, certain places where people uh, are in a part of urgent, we have seen people. Defecating in corner of the washroom, like the urinal pod. So that happens, but uh, that's part of uh, what we are and uh, we have to clean it up and uh, make another uh, safe space for people to use. Thank Anything you so else? much. Yeah. Are there any questions to any of the speakers? Just wait for a minute if there are any questions. So I think uh, we are done. So, so I'd like to thank all the speakers today for uh, explaining such a beautiful case studies uh, across the sanitation value chain. The one point that is strongly coming out from all the presentations is that to have a pool of private sector entities in the city who could help the government in uh, you know, establishing this infrastructure, it's very important to create an environment for them a uh, positive environment for the private sector to work in partnership. Uh, so this is something which is coming out strongly from today's presentation. So uh, once again, thanks to all the speakers.
yeah so there are no questions so thanks to all the speakers for joining taking out your time and explaining us about the beautiful case studies so with this we'll conclude today's session uh just uh of some announcements on the action plan so we have sent you the template we request you to complete it and send it to us by 11th of this month so you can also work in groups if you are coming from the single city that is also possible so please do share your action plans in time we will be having presentations from you in the subsequent sessions so we'll meet you in our next class on 9th uh, please do join. We will be having a session on how to make uh, climate resilient planning, especially for citywide inclusive sanitation. So this thanks to all the speakers again. And uh, thank you to all the participants for joining. Thank you. See you on Saturday again. Okay.